I'm joined by political commentator and former Liberal MP, the Honorable Eleni Bakopanos. Thank you for being with us, Eleni. Thank you, Alicia. It was a short campaign, 36 days. I want to know from you, what did you think about it as a whole and the short turnaround time that Canadians had to come out and cast their vote amid a pandemic? Uh, it was an unusual campaign, I must say, for all the campaigns that I've uh, been involved in over 50 years, both provincially and, and federally. It was a very unusual campaign, and especially because of the pandemic, it was another element added. But uh, Canadians did go out and vote. We heard they were unprecedented numbers at the advanced polls. So that's a good sign. It's a good sign that people are actually exercising their democratic uh, duty, because it is a duty to vote. And I think uh, a lot of people at the beginning were asking questions, why did we need this election? And I think that haunted the Prime Minister throughout the whole campaign. And, and I don't believe he actually gave a, a right answer for it, except to say that he needed uh, a majority in order to be able to move forward on some of the issues like climate change and some of his other policies that are very progressive. Uh, will Canadians buy that tonight? Will Quebecers buy that tonight? That's another, another matter. We'll see. Very late in the night, I have a feeling. <laughs> Overall, how would you say the leaders did out on the campaign trail? What would you score them? I think I'd sc uh, I want to begin by scoring Annamie Paul, who was practically written out totally, but she did ter a terrific fr uh, French p uh, debate and a really good English debate, in my opinion. So uh, I believe she was, if, and as a woman, I'd like to say it was fantastic to have one woman on that stage also representing a, a political party in Canada. But I think she did overall the best. Uh, it, I think all of them scored well for their base. Uh, the big winner, I think, was after the last debate, uh, the question that was asked of Mr. Blanchet and the Bloc gave him a lot of wind in his sails. Uh, I think the moderator could have asked the question but stopped instead of interrupting him. If I was to make a political commentary, it was, it, it was a legitimate question, but then that blew up. And the fact that Mr. Legault had already gone out as the provincial premier and made the comment that, you know, he vote for anybody but the Liberals or the Tories, really. He, he was referring to, the, to voting Tory because those are the only two political parties that are really have a chance of forming government, right? So all that taken together gave a lot of... Uh, wind to the sails of, of the bloc. Will that be translated into votes? I think it was translated in the advanced polls. At least that's what most of the analysts are saying, and that's the people that I've been speaking to also, that there were a record number of separatists who actually went out and voted in the advanced uh, polls. But will that translate into a victory for the bloc? Certainly Quebec, as always, is the province to watch. It can determine a minority or a majority. So do you think that the debates themselves had a sway on voters, the English and the French debates, especially the last one, the English debate, where you just mentioned the moderator did call Bills 21 and 96 discriminatory. Do you think Quebecers are taking that into account right now as they head out and vote? I think certain people in the English-speaking community may be taking that into, into account, especially, as I said, after Mr. Legault came up with a statement also in terms of not voting for the, for the Liberals, even though all the political leaders outside of Jagmeet Singh, I'd say, and he was kind of... Uh, vacillating, uh, think that the legislation is acceptable. Mr. Trudeau has said that on Bill 21, he may decide to actually challenge the bill, but he didn't say it's discriminatory. I think the only one who said it's dis discriminatory was Jagmeet Singh from the NDP and Anami Paul, who both felt, but the others. And overall, I think the debates may, you know, debates are a very difficult thing. What you're looking for in the debate is a punch out. OK, and I don't think we saw anything in the four debates that actually gave somebody a knockout, knockout, I meant to say earlier, a knockout. I think they, they all within their own base did very well. I think the prime minister being the target, obviously, because usually the ruling uh, party and the prime minister are the ones that are attacked the most. They're attacked on their record. I think he survived quite well. And I, I really think when he said that uh, Mr. Blanchet doesn't have also a monopoly on who is a Quebecer, for me, that resonated. It may have resonated with other minorities living in Quebec. But all that is, again, you know, people have to go out and vote. 
today is the day that the parties have to get out their vote and which party is better at getting out their vote, which has been identified obviously over the course of the campaign. But it was certainly an unprecedented campaign. I have never seen this type of campaign before. And I also found it, I must say, Alicia, very, a very violent campaign. I mean, there were stones thrown at the prime minister. There was abuse of certain candidates and of certain members of parliament of all stripes. I think that's unacceptable in our system. And I'm worrying, is this a trend that we're going to see of the extreme right? I mean, we had all, of course, the anti-vaxxers who were always out there and those who felt that uh, there should be no mandate for vaccine. But we've never seen that before. We've never seen that level of violence in the election. I, I mean, I may have been shouted at by a constituent, but I, you know, I, I never had stones thrown at me. So I'm wondering if this is really the appropriate trend. And I don't know if you have another question, but I was going to say the rise of the PPC, Mr. Bernier's party, is discerning because they really represent an extreme element, okay? And they will be, in my opinion, the surprise tonight. Thanks, Eleni. You're welcome. We'll have more analysis for you coming up later in the show. In Hochelaga, Alicia Rubertucci, City News.